great. The Gary Vee Audio Experience brings you after the app, and this is the important show because these two gentlemen are the generals, they are the infrastructure, the backbone, the captains of Planet of the Apps. Ben Silverman, Howard Owens, I am humbled to have you on the podcast. Uh, for the couple of people in the Vayner Nation that don't know who you gentlemen are, Howard, we're gonna start with you and your beautiful face. Tell everybody who you are and a little bit about your career. Uh, I'm Howard Owens, great to see you, Gary V. Great to talk to Vayner Nation, love you guys. Big fans, first time, uh, first time caller, long time <laughs> listener. Um, I, uh, you're not was, calling, you're actually a guest. I know, but I'm just referring to talk radio. Can you turn off your phone, Dick? I mean, Jesus Christ, you're ruining uh, the show eight brutal. seconds into the, the... I turn my ringer right, off. Ben, I ben would, Silverman. <laughs> Let's, 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 Howard, you regroup over there. After, ben I, Summer, after I birthed Howard. Yes, Ben, <laughs> no. Ben, we're going to go with you while Howard drinks a little water here and tries to reset himself. Uh, tell the Vayner Nation who you are. You have you have an amazing career. I mean, if people go into this Google uh, hole, they'll be there for five days. You have an, For such a young man, you've had such a prolific career in the Hollywood landscape. And, and so tell everybody who you are on Planet of the Apps and a little bit about your career. EP, I am executive producer of Planet of the Apps with my partner over here, Howard T. Owens the third, the son of a Connecticut legislator and judge. So I'll help I'll help do Howard's Howard's job here. Thank you. A man of the nation from Bridgeport and not the good part of town. Okay. We all know Bridgeport's <laughs> got two sides. Other side of the tracks. Other side of the tracks. Self made self made man. But um have been a serial entrepreneur and executive in the entertainment world, creating T V shows, producing T V shows traveling the world, looking for great ideas, things like Jane the Virgin, Ugly Betty, The Office that I EP'd, executive produced, and uh, and then many other shows, co-created um, Biggest Loser with Howard and, and some colleagues, Nashville Star, Date My Mom, The Restaurant, tons of different genres of TV. Had the great privilege of uh, you know rehiring Donald Trump to be uh, on The Celebrity yep. Apprentice when I was chairman of NBC and Universal Media, and uh, have been enjoying making content forever and love Planet of the Apps. It just feels like a game-changing show. I had a show a long time ago called Fashion Star. Yes. Where we had Saks Fifth Avenue, H&M, and Macy's <laughs> as my judges on the show, but basically investing their dough to buy product live. Think a little bit Project Runway meets HSN almost. And, uh, and that was kind of something that was in my head when Howard approached me about um, – Plan of the apps, and that he was thinking about the app space, and, and it's, we it's, collaborated. It's interesting about that show. I think I got to tell you this while we were filming. That show, more than any show, as me living my life, blew my mind when I heard when I knew that there was business dynamics to the content. Jessica Simpson, right? Exactly. I remember this. Nicole Richie, John yep, Bravado. I remember this clearly. I was like, "Holy shit!" It was the apex. What was that? Two thousand four, five, six, seven. Like where was? Yeah, that? seven, eight. Yeah, I just remember it was like reality was really happening. And I just remember thinking, you know, that was such a big business if it was a humongously hit show. Obviously, you've had a lot of hits. That show didn't go crazy the way I thought it was going to, probably not the way you guys thought it was going to as well, but the business model was bonkers. Bonkers. And with apps, we thought what, what was incredible is you could, that night, download Yep. You can actually access right. within the, the content ecosystem. You You're can back, Howard. You're back now. And buy the app, you know, or get the app or experience the app. And I think Ben's, uh, what Ben did with Fashion Star, and prior to that, what we did with Biggest Loser, which was offer you know weight loss uh, programs and diets to the audience who were fans of Loser. You know, Ben took it the next level. Then with Fashion Star. And I, what we saw with Planet of the Apps with, was that the whole, in, in doing it with Apple, is the whole ecosystem of consumption of media, following your own apps, becoming part of the show, and being able to experience and purchase or download. And, you know, that, that whole well, here, I mean, 360 sure. has Genesis, never existed before. When we were working on this, and I think we talked to you, Gary V, about this early on, is as, you know, if, who wants to be a millionaire, democratize the game show, fastest finger. You could literally play the game from home and be on the show. And what people forget is during that initial cycle of Millionaire, which aired on ABC, it aired initially five days in a row, then five days in a row, aired for 10, it was crazy. 10 nights in a row. And we, we had the privilege of putting that show together and bringing it over to America. Regis and dominated. Dominated. He was our first choice. Dom. I, wasn't he the second choice? Somebody, somebody you, one of you told me a good story. We Not talk, he, he wasn't had, the second choice, but we had thought about Donahue. Yes. 
I love that because I want to be Donahue. I, do, I think I'm going to bring Donahue back in Gary Vee form. I'm doing daytime TV, I think, and I want people to call me. Ingrid in Iowa, what do you say? Like, I've been dreaming about this. I, I By the way, you are manifesting all your other dreams. Why won't you be the next Donahue? And then I'm going to win seven Super Bowls as the owner of the New York Jets, and then I'll be ready to go. I think the latter's a lot tougher for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm I'm more on the Bitcoin and the and the the, I get dru- it. the Druze. I Aaron, get it. What was I was thinking more dinosaur when I said <laughs> like, Gary. Got, What's that, Howard? Michael was, Douglas. Michael Douglas. Yeah. Yeah. Almost he's like got it. Show. But but so if if millionaire democratized the game show, in yes. one of those early episodes, you saw a guy who's partner was in the audience. It was the first time you had a gay contestant. Yes. And it just happened because the guy was smart and he won the fastest finger and got his way onto the show. It wasn't cast in the normal way. Then you looked at what Idol did. You voted with your phone. Yes. You made the choice. It actually started in Big Brother. There was a whole lawsuit in yes, Europe. I but big, but I big Brother did that telephony first. Yep, that was I the na- you know the name for around using your phone to vote and uh, around everything with the phone at that time. Now apps is one step further where you're, you're literally voting with your, your click and yeah, your desire download. to download yeah. download this this app and participate in that way. And then obviously the show's emotional heart is these extraordinary American dreams, these amazing men and women from all over the place, You know, which I loved as well about the show because it's democratized entrepreneurship. 100%. Technology has enabled people like you, Gary Vanacek, to be a king. Yeah. And, you know, that's a lot harder than when you would have started trying to become and compete Are 25 you, years ago. We were ago. talking thought? last night about the casting process. Yeah. I was talking to Nikki last night and we were talking about casting and finding apps and how we went and did it. And and people are and, and you yourself said people have reached out to you since the show has come on. And you're like, oh, my God, they want to have their app on the show. It's a great experience. Part of the idea behind the show is not different from, say, Nashville Star, where the first season we found Miranda Lambert, yep. who was a 18-year-old singer, songwriter, guitar player, who Sony Music told us, you'll never really find anyone. This is for posterity. It'll be good for marketing for the, for the brand. We find Miranda Lambert in this show. One of the things that we think is cool and helpful is to allow the glass ceiling of Silicon Valley to be shattered, is allow anyone with an idea and the you know kind of perseverance to come and wait in line and make their video and and pitch their wares. But we, as you know, Gary and Aaron here are still with us. We go through an extremely you know rigid vetting process, where we really want to make sure what we're, people have what it takes. But the fact that anyone can do it, we don't really know who you are. We don't check your CV before you come on the show. Is well, is a what, great what, opportunity even, for people. What's even greater is. That's the micro of the macro, which is this show is bringing awareness to that world, but there's millions of people that will never be on this show that are just doing it direct to consumer at scale. You guys are reacting to the reality. This is a synthesized version that gives even great exposure to the genre, but this is happening every day. Right now, people are listening. They'll never be casted on this show because there's still that gatekeeper aspect and things of that nature. And that is the most powerful thing because as we continue to bring awareness to what's actually going on, it inspires those that may not go through this funnel that just might make a great product and put it on the app store. And well, that's a big deal. I think I think it's been the age of the grinder. Now it's the age of the hustler. And, and how do you define the difference can, between a grinder and a hustler? A hustler works just as hard as a grinder, but they know that the no is irresistible and they're going to come on top. They're not going to like work the half yes into the no. They're going to take that no and make it a yes. How and, are, and, that, and the hustler also is living in this age of maybe I'm going to skip my education the old-fashioned yeah, way. Maybe I'm not going to build a retail outlet. Maybe I'm not going to spend my money on marketing. Maybe I'm going to use a different kind of currency. Maybe I'm going to bet on myself. Maybe I'm going to go to the bank and get a line of credit. Maybe I'm not going to enter this system, this door. And I think it's these people who are growing up and using their their whole street smart skill along with their intellect and idea. And it's really different. You feel it. Oh, it's energy. super different. Howard, biggest surprise from what you thought was going to go down to what's manifested. You know, one of the surprises really, and I, I shouldn't say it was a surprise because we wanted it to happen, but until it happens, you don't see it, is you, Jessica, Gwyneth, and Will becoming so personally invested in the apps and the creators and seeing you guys go to town and seeing you get on planes and meet these people and seeing you really, you know, care. And I think that we, we thought that. We, we cast you guys. We think you're awesome, but you're incredibly busy running empires. You have a lot of other things on, the, on your plate. 
But you guys dug deep, and I, we, I, I was impressed by the ability for you and your co-partners, uh, your advisors, to stay emotionally and mentally connected to the process, which was hard. You know, when we did this, we shot over, you know, 10, 13 days, and we did 15-hour days, and you guys saw, I think, over 100 apps. It's a, it's a big process. And you put a lot into that. You really, you know, there's a lot of information coming at you. And so you, your perseverance and your guys' ability to really help lift this experience has been awesome. Ben? You know, I'm I'm still in it. Yeah. It's really early. Yeah. Um, for me, the moment as as the culture starts to expand and absorb it, I'm, I'm thrilled that we're starting our consumer-facing marketing campaign it's a and lighting it's a it up play, right with apple then a network which is going to do everything up front and apple kind of doing it along the way has that been intriguing for you i mean you used to run nbc like how, how are you feeling about that i'm i'm totally into it because it is new and exciting for me and and watching it play out and knowing where it hits the consumer and knowing when the consumer finds it and whether it's somebody kind of entering these new doors like whether it's on the dot com through the apple music platform or on apple music itself or on the apple TV platform, you know, all of these different touch points inside iTunes and then through to Apple Music is is really cool. And the global, we haven't yet pointed our megaphone globally. Apple has turned on its platform globally, but we haven't yet gone into the rest of the world, which we're going to start to do. And that is going to be really cool, too, as we watch and find how much the Ukrainians love Gary V. Well, of course. I mean, and of course the, they do. And, and, and as the, as I mean, I was travel, born in Belarus. Like, come let's on, just baby, call those it what are it your is. people. And, right. and Ben, you mentioned something to me which I think is totally true. And I, we may have said this to you, Gary, but one of the things that we didn't know, you know, we, we wanted the escalator pitch to work and be a, a great experience. And we had tested it out and looked good. But we couldn't bank on was that all of the entrepreneurs and all the app creators are video creators in general. Talk about the hustler or the grinder. These people, these, you know, whether from 17 to 70, everyone, you know, by creating their app understands visuals and understands sure. everyone the creation. Everyone saw a companion up on that screen who's watched the show and thought, oh, I get it. That's a great idea. And then I have my Aunt Amy up in, uh, you know, who's an architect sending me her tweaks on Companion and how to do use it with old people and the way she wanted to target market it. And then Are I had my mom- Are you calling your Aunt Amy old? My Aunt Amy is old. Respect. But she started old, just <laughs> yes. to be clear. Old soul? Uh, so yeah, I, she, I think one of the things surprised us, the escalator pitch, you know, defined for me, it's like the age of the storyteller. Anyone coming down in 60 seconds can tell uh, a wrenching story, something really important because they live it and they're used to selling it. And that's how they're And also been the trained. apps themselves are manifested in a screen enabled world. And that segue in the moment in the show, when you throw from what they're doing on their iPad or on their phone to the actual screen in the, in the studio was like an aha, this is a new lexicon of art. Howard, without using names, obviously Will was very involved very, very early. He was locked in as one of the mentors. Without naming names, you got three other mentors. How many names were considered for those three spots and how did you guys do with your priority and list? I'm sure you know, you went through a lot of names before you got down to me, so I, I get that part, you, but not, like the other two. You, it's yeah. a short list, I have to tell you. What was we, the list? I, I mean, we're trying, to get some, we're trying to get some scoops I'm here on the Gary right Vee audio experience. We, we got our first we got choices. Our first choices. You know, period. Yeah. Period. Jess was we the, didn't, we didn't Jess say, held out the longest. Somebody, we didn't say, let's go to somebody like Gwyneth Paltrow, and then go get somebody just like tangential. We didn't go like Jessica Alba. You guys are we rolling like, into this studio and disrespecting me in the face and telling me the four names. I mean, there's no way I was the, you, to me. Yeah, no, but, the first time I met you. You, you said, helped. hello, Greg Vanderpoop. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I mean, they're like, like let's, let's, see, let's call it real G here. G Gary Vee, yes. you came with a tornado of enthusiasm supporting you, not just from you. And the moment your name surfaced, the army turned on its... It's megaphone, and that army is also of all of the incredible friends and entrepreneurs that you've supported or worked with or people you've given advice to, and it just started like machine gun fire on us. And Jimmy Iveen, our, our kind yep. of mentor and, sure. and godfather here in the Apple Music Studio, built, built this. You know, yep. It's incredible. He really connected to you immediately. You, you know, sold him at about 30, 20 seconds. seconds. Because he's a Staten fucking Island. genius. Yeah, Staten Island knows, <laughs> that he is. knows its brotherhood. And and we were and and truthfully, Ling and Howard, 
were Went so, to bet, absolutely. We knew so, you. And, and all I was thinking. I do try to be in business with you when I was at Nat Geo. I'm very I've aware. I tried to reach out to you. Yes. Uh, and you I was just thinking, I'm like, he wants to bank the show. He wants to finance it. He doesn't want it because yeah. initially you yeah. wanted to be. I wanted to be the singular VC. Yeah, you wanted to be the yeah. VC and the mentor. So it was, yeah. a, it was a whole. I wanted to be the mentor, the people pitching, and the VC. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think it should have been planted in Gary Vee. I mean, like, yeah. let's yeah. call yeah. it what it really yeah. should have yeah. been. And now, it may end up. Now, now, let's talk about some inside scoops. First day of filming was November 14th, my birthday. I refused to not be with my family, so I missed it. You guys did some run throughs. Howard, I think you sat in for me and acted as me. That's true. It was a disaster. <laughs> I come the next we were day, all it's the greatest of all time. Do we then give me the credit for being the glue of this show? I think we more than confirmed Howard's ineptitude <laughs> at being on the show. But but while you may have salvaged, <laughs> salvaged stand in the desert, yes. we, we felt very good that that show was going to crush. And and I, albeit you are a star among stars, what? when you turn on that screen in the 4K and are watching at home, all chilled out in any manifestation you want, and you see the four of you up on that screen, you're not seeing four people like you. That accomplished, that focused, that articulate, and half of them that beautiful. Yeah, I mean, those, I mean, <laughs> Will and, is and, gorgeous. And, and Stunning. The other, the thing is you have four different personalities and bring something, you know, different Absolutely. to it from a TV perspective. Totally. But also then what we saw, which is fascinating, you all have business, different business filters, filters yeah, and different ways that you conduct and different ways that you think. And that uh, added another wrinkle to it that we really hadn't anticipated, which is awesome. Do you guys get excited as I do that forever, forever, you will be associated with producing Apple Music's first original show. I mean, just, you know, whatever happens, if there's a season two, if there's 30 seasons, it's just always there. And I think it speaks to knowing your guys' career a little bit. It's that innovation arm, right? You know, we, you know, fashion stars. I mean, look, I, I know until you brought it up one day in the trailer, I didn't know that was you guys. I didn't know the Hollywood landscape. To me, that was just very smart. And for me, that's like credit. I think in a lot of ways, this new distribution, obviously Netflix and other OTTs exist, but let's call it what it is. This is the most powerful company in the world at this moment. This is their first foray into something that you guys grew up in, right? Like, you know, to me, a lot of this has happened backwards. Entrepreneurship and this backed into culture. This is what you guys dreamed and aspired to do your whole life. It must be pretty fantastic. We're psyched. How, it's how amazing. And I, I would just say that one of the things that has been really, um, one of the things that has been, uh, such a great gift is that Apple has really supported creativity from the beginning. We pitched in the show, they liked the idea, and they really allowed us to make it. And they've really kind of, it's no surprise that great things happen here and that, you know, they, they've been responsible for some of the most innovative um, things, things launches ever. Yep. And they support creative thinking. Well, design, design been, is such a core element to the the culture of the company, and so we're all kind of designers in this convergent world. Whether we're, you know, tech entrepreneurs, video makers, platform builders, there's an element of design and aesthetic that permeates everything we're all doing, especially as it relates to. The Let's consumer. wrap up with this because there's a lot of people listening. I know my audience. What's happening in Hollywood? It's changing, right? The game's changing. We're talking about OTT influencers how things get funded. It's never been better to be a great creator because you do have Hulu, Apple Music, Amazon to go along with HBO and Showtime, to go along with the networks. Facebook is gonna have its original part. Like, like what is happening in this town from some real vets, right? From forget about the Apple, forget about the Battalion and the Lightspeed and the Gary Vee tech filter. What's the Hollywood inside talk? Do people realize it's changing? Do they think it's good? Do they think it's bad? What's the punchline in this town? I think there's a, a combo effect going on and there's definitely a generational shift. And those who love culture creation and storytelling are pretty content because they're getting their stories told and mm -hmm. their content created. Those who just care about bucks are a little nervous because the dollar is getting squeezed by all these giant vertically integrated companies. And this massive oligopoly that controls voice in America, real and fake voice in America, is a little intimidating for the storytelling community because it's hard to get your story sustained in that environment and it's a little scary on the business side and that and that's something that you feel like this combination of excitement 
from those who are here about you know the pure creativity and nervousness from those who've been in the game a long time and are watching things go from 22 episodes to 10, from owning back ends taken to open markets to owning back ends and profit participations going into closed markets. There's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that is uh, nerve wracking in that sense. Howard? And one of the things you guys were talking about earlier is in the VC world that coin is the new thing, that coin is the new, you know, mm -hmm. in, 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 in our vernacular, what storytellers like Ben and I are saying is that video is the new currency and in that we live in a video enabled world. My kids don't, you know, yes, they probably text and stuff, but they live in a, you know, on YouTube and on Instagram and it's a visual video enabled world. And I think as that grows, the opportunity for storytellers just expands, you know, expands and magnifies 100%. and we're just bullish on. Uh, AR, VR, also where you get to tell the story. Tuesday nights, nine ET, right? 9 p.m. Eastern? 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. Oh, is that right? It's such a great launching pad, right? Nine, that is not true. No, no, Eastern. that was the, Ben, I think that was the first episode. Okay. Yeah. We're that was back. The, we're, we're back. back. Thank okay. You scared we're the fuck back. out of me. I scared myself. 9 okay. p.m. ET, I scared myself. I get, I get As it came out of your lips, you're like, why the fuck are we launching at midnight <laughs> on the East Coast? Like, yeah. East Coast that is the like, epicenter. That's Guys, the most interesting New York is the epicenter of the I've world. Heard. Like, LA's an afterthought. Ratings wise. Life wise, but it's good that you've discounted the rest of the world, who also will get it at varying time periods. I'm an American. Listen, I might have been born in the Soviet Union, but I'm an American. Yeah, Americans because, don't even realize Canada and Mexico. I mean, Americans are terrible at this. As a man who's been to Ghana and Romania the past ten days, yes, you do travel, Gary. Yes, but I'm trying to speak for the the people. <laughs> Gary V, D guys, Rock, Tyler, thank you, you guys thank you, rock. thank you, thank you, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. No, you're the best, Gary V. See ya. Hey guys, I hope you really enjoyed this episode of the Gary Vee Experience. Now go out and share this, pass it on, let me know what you thought.